I feel that we are now living in one of the most confusing times in history where economy is more important than humanity. And so many things that we have taken for granted that this is the way it should be are being questioned. Um, and that the unexamined life is not worth living. What made a really big difference is adopting a meditation practice. About 15 years ago, um, I met a my guru, I'm a Tibetan Buddhist practitioner. I guess I kind of felt the benefits of practicing Tai Chi. Um, it feels good. I didn't get sick. You know, um, it's a bit like it's a bit of a natural high. Actually, um, the more you do it, the more the more I feel good. I started seriously pursuing uh, the yoga practice, and of course, ultimately pursuing a yoga teaching and also Dharma practice. I get very um, absorbed into Tibetan Buddhism and still am. And now I teach yoga. So now um, in my life, every, every day when I wake up, I'm trying to be aware of my decisions. When I encounter anything, anything I do, you know, just trying to be aware of, of where I am, you know, what I'm saying, you know, what I'm doing, and trying to make all of those choices in harmony, you know, and, and peaceful, but truthful, but in a way that that is affecting people in a healthy way. I've been teaching since 2008. I love it. I love the students. I love the places I teach. I love the lights that go on in their eyes when they hear the truth the same way it did with me. Um, you know, and I don't mean to sound kind of like a born-again Christian or something like, oh, it's the truth, you know, God's telling you the truth. You know, the truth is that there is, there is a sense, right? There is something that makes sense in life. There is, there is, it's not just a random compilation of events and it's not just a, it, it's not just a sort of graspy hell realm here on earth, which is what it seems to be sometimes, you know. There is an order to things. It's, a, it's called karma, but you can call it whatever you want. It's, you know, the enlightenment principle, whatever it is. But there is an order to things, and I do believe that. And that helps me a lot. You know, painting is one of those things uh, that I think, in a way, ripened me to hear the Dharma. But, you know, again, these things are so slippery, it's hard to know what really led to me being able to hear things, but I was not in pursuit of anything. But when I heard him teaching, it almost seemed like uh, all the puzzle pieces of my phenomena kind of began to fit into places. And I knew that if I was paying attention, all the minutes of my days and nights could be a practice. And so what I ended up doing is my practice. That's what I do nowadays, especially when I run into challenges, when life doesn't go my way or things get ugly. I try to remember to breathe love. And by doing that, I connect with another energy inside of me, the energy of love, more like an energy, like a frequency, and in that space, I have much more leeway to deal with what comes up in my mind, the fear, the anger, the revolt, the injustice. Something happens for me in which there is more space. I guess the bottom line, I'm trying to be um, as good of a person as I possibly can be every day. And that's very important to me. Uh, because I'm, you know, I've been studying uh, meditation um, for for almost 25 years. 
I dream of a day when things are more serene and I have more time to do my own practice. I, I, I like to meditate. I like to do my own yoga practice. I like to have a, a nice clean space in my house. At one point I had to stop meditating because, um, you know, I have two kids now, my wife, and, and that sort of got in the way. But as the Swami who initiate, initiated me into the Vedanta philosophy said, well, Bobby, you know, even if you don't meditate, being patient with your kids, being patient with everybody, that's, that's meditating. That's all meditating. It's just a different style of meditating. So as long as you practice that, you're meditating. But there's only one style of meditation that really works, the non-directive style, because most other types of meditation actually make me more anxious and more distracted. The ones that tell you what to focus on in your body and what to visualize. I'm like, I don't want to visualize that. I can't. <laughs> I'm visualizing something else. But yeah, there's another kind that you know works well with kids and stuff like that. So um, I do that every morning for 20 minutes. Well, now my kids are a little older, so I, I just recently started meditating, you know, 20 minutes every morning and 20 minutes every evening, and that's been amazing. At the same time, you, you, st you still get all these, this different energy that comes at you, and sometimes you just want to say, fuck off, <laughs> leave me the fuck alone, I don't want to deal with it. But then another part of me you know, taps and say, hmm, think about that. You know, traditionally, traditionally, uh, before this age, it was kind of a secret thing, you know, to be a quote-unquote tantric practitioner, a Vajrayana practitioner. But now it's uh, very common um, in the West uh, to kind of openly talk about some of the things that uh, we engage in. It's a Still, like all Buddhism, uh, we're expected to just be practitioners. It's a lonely project, a solitary project that uh, we do every day. And what it does is, well, there's always at least 47 different thoughts, and they're kind of in a tornado like this. Um, and thoughts spiral around. Sometimes they'll spiral back around in five minutes if I lose it. Sometimes it's five months later and then I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> that thing that I forgot, it's over there. But what it has helped me learn to do is kind of slow the whirlwind down a bit and occasionally I can pick a clear thought out of it and look at it and be like, oh, that's what I have to do. So I have that tool now and it's very helpful. Um, it's not a cure, but it is a really good adaptation. I've kind of uh, applied myself as diligently. I mean, let me just say I'm utterly distracted all the time, but I'm doing the best I can to kind of know that I'm distracted. And um, that's kind of the practice fundamentally from top to bottom of the day and through the night as much as possible to know, uh, know when you're distracted. I really feel that by me breathing love to myself and then to her, I create that space in which I don't have to judge this. I can be part of it and not be apart from it. And maybe that is what I feel the most excited about right now living my life at 71, almost turning to 72 soon, to me there's a tapping into the fountain of youth with this mentality, with this mantra which I use to breathe love into every and any situation that is adverse that is attacking, that is chafing at who I am, at my energy.